to the Mars Hill United Methodist Church. All are welcome here, and I am so glad that you are worshiping with us this day. Know that uh, this is Transfiguration Sunday, so on Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, so this Wednesday, the 17th, the Ash Wednesday service will be uh, available for you. And to prepare for that, if you would like to, during during a walk you are taking, your a favorite haunt that you walk on, if you want to collect some dirt and uh, then have some dirt and some olive oil we're going to do crosses that way if you wish to, to do your cross at home and uh, connect with that aspect of this Lenten season I invite you to do that and then for the Mondays in Lent so the following Monday at 6 p.m. we are going to be having a, a Lenten discipling journey we'll be taking together uh, so I invite you to come there to zoom and then use the same link that we do for the for the Sunday school for that know that our regular Sunday school class at 945 on Sundays is available to you as well as our fellowship time on Thursdays at 3 for zoom so um, please remember you can uh, you can take it avail yourself of those and connect with folks in in real time now let us prepare our hearts and minds that we might be transformed by the living God this day. service where we go to the Lord in prayer and we lift up one another knowing that God hears and cares and reaches to us in this life let us be in an attitude of prayer gracious and loving God we give you thanks for this day we give you thanks for all the ways in which you have brought light into our lives we thank you for the love of family and friends. We give you thanks for the love of this church family and the way in which we hold one another in care. Lord, especially we hold up to your care this day. Chuck, that that 
chemo will shrink his tumors and that his body will will heal and be strong enough to to walk through this this treatment we hold up carol as she cares for him we hold up for pierre as he recovers and phyllis as she cares for him we hold up ruth patricia frida jean we hold up all those who are, are challenged with this separation that, that this time has brought of this pandemic, all the folks that are, are lonely and isolated at home. We hold up for healing and care, Barbara, Luke, Cheyenne. We hold up Rebecca and her family. We hold up this country and ask for your gracious unity and peace to be upon us. That we might find a way to disagree with one another and still hold each other in love. We hold up to you all those who are suffering with COVID, all those who are ill, all those healthcare workers that, that are, are worn out from the challenges that have happened over the last year. We hold them that they might, that you might strengthen them. We hold up teachers and students. We hold up all the ways that, that we are hurting and struggling um, financially as a country for those who, who are struggling with work, with bills, with fear of the future. Lord, we hold up all these things to you in the trust that you care and that your touch matters. All the things that are upon our hearts that were not mentioned aloud, Lord, you know our needs. We lift them to you as well. And we ask all these things in your Son's name who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory.
as uh, it is Transfiguration Sunday, we hear the same story we hear every year regarding the Transfiguration. This year's it comes from from Mark, Mark chapter nine, beginning with verse two. Hear now the word. Six days later, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and brought them to the top of a very high mountain where they were alone. He was transformed in front of them, and his clothes were amazingly bright, brighter than if they had been bleached white. Elijah and Moses appeared and were talking with Jesus. Peter reacted to all of this by saying to Jesus, Rabbi, it's good that we're here. Let's make three shrines, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He said this because he didn't know how to respond, for the three of them were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice spoke from the cloud, This is my son whom I dearly love. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I like hiking. Many of you might enjoy it as well. I don't do it as often as I ought to, but I do enjoy it when I do. There are beautiful places around these parts to hike to. Match Patch is lovely, where you can see such a wonderful 360-degree vantage point of the mountains around us. I've always been rather partial to the profile trail at Grandfather Mountain as well. It is quite a hike to come up it. And when you get to the top, you really feel as though you have earned the view that you get to see. Although the most impressive view from a day out hiking actually came from an easier hike, but it was when I was in the, the Swiss, Swiss Alps. So we were already at a pretty good altitude before we started, staying in a little hostel on the edge of a mountain. And we walked out through the valleys to beautiful green, lush grasses and flowers. And we looked up and the clouds parted from a high mountain and it literally took my breath away to see how high the peak of that mountain was. I really wasn't sure what so much of a breathtaking view was before then. I don't know if it was necessarily life-changing, but it was definitely memorable. And maybe if one is going to take all the journey to get to high places, one might want a life-changing or at least memorable kind of view once you get up there. Well, a hiking trip that Jesus takes with three of his disciples this time wasn't just for the beauty of the view. Jesus often went to high places to pray, to connect with God, to recenter himself in his journey, modeling for us the example of the life lived where we take regular time to connect with God, whether it's on a mountaintop or, or wherever it is for you, that we remind ourselves to, to reestablish ourselves in God. And it is a transformative time within Jesus's ministry. Because the transfiguration marks the point where, after he comes down from the mountain, that he sets his face to Jerusalem. From then on, there is a different tenor and an understanding that Jesus is headed to the cross. And he 
knows it. And he lets the disciples know it, even though the disciples don't really want to know it or really don't take it in and understand it, that that's what he's saying will happen. But for Jesus, he comes to the mountain at this junction in time in his ministry where he's refocusing himself for the challenge and heartache where this journey will take him to death on the cross. And, and, and Peter, James, and John are up there and they see him transformed before him. Now, maybe you paused a little bit, now, or, or maybe you were here with me last year when we talked about Transfiguration Sunday, and you recall that conversation then with the word transformed. It's not usually the word we're accustomed to. We always call it Transfiguration Sunday. So, uh, if you're curious, in the Greek, the word used is actually the, more the, the transformed, but it can reasonably be interpreted between transfigured and transformed. And since it is spoken about Jesus' clothing changing colors, the concept that, that could rightly be taken is that it is simply an appearance change that happens, so thusly transfigured. But I find it interesting that when reading commentators, it feels as though people are a little bit afraid of thinking that it could be transformed. They say, no, this is not transformed. This is just the appearance. Jesus does not change. And it comes from this thought that Jesus as perfect wouldn't need to change. Now, I've made the argument before, and so I state it again because I think it's perfect. I don't think there's anything, or I think it's important. I don't think there's anything, I shouldn't say my argument's perfect. <laughs> He's important, but I don't think there's anything unholy, imperfect about change. Change is a good and holy thing. I think the problem with it comes from Greek philosophy, not from what the Bible says about God and, and change. I have no problem with thinking that Jesus had some kind of change here. He was becoming aware very clearly of what was to happen. And to prepare himself on this mount, he has some companionship with ones who might understand the challenge of the journey themselves, Elijah and Moses. Now, the significance of Elijah and Moses might just be the fact that Moses is considered the giver of the law, and the law being a, a portion of the Hebrew scriptures, and, and that Elijah is symbolic of the prophets, being the prophet that was taken up on the fiery chariot and therefore thought to come back again before before the, the Messiah would be. And so that it is symbolic that this is Jesus convening with both the law and the prophets, that fullness of understanding. But we can also think of it as Christ facing a very challenging journey and being comforted by Moses that knew a great deal about what it meant to feel inadequate for the level of call that God gives you on your life. And Elijah, who knew the challenges and hurts that went up to his own mountaintop and had a mountaintop experience of God coming to him, not in the earthquake and the fire and the wind, but in the still small voice. Maybe this was a gift for Jesus. The people he needed to talk to to keep him going on the journey ahead of him. It sounds more than just a superficial type of thing that was offered to him. Maybe not a transformation of the substance of who Jesus was. 
but a transformational time for him. But to be completely honest, what happened to Jesus, whether if it was merely a, a transfiguration or a transformation, doesn't really matter that much to us now. Now, maybe you will argue with me. You can. I love to talk about these things. Let me know. Uh, but if, if, you, if it needs to not be transformation, then, then that is okay with me. Because what really matters is what's happening for us right now. If we wish to be disciples, are we up for transformation? on this Sunday of light and transformation. Peter, James, and John are there observing this, our disciples that we can connect with as to what was happening at the time. They were terrified and didn't know what to do. Now, oftentimes, if people are terrified and don't know what to do, they stand in silence and awe. Not our Peter. I love Peter. He's so obviously to me ADHD. He doesn't know how to be silent when things are strange and awkward. He, he jumps out with a statement as he doesn't know what else to do. And he says, we need to make three, three uh, tabernacles is the word that, that he uses. Three shrines. Three, and the tabernacle was the word they used for the, the mobile temple that moved around in the wilderness before they built the temple. And he, it was right. It was, it was a reasonable thing to say. This is a holy event. And it needs to be marked. This is amazing. And we need to honor this, and we'll build this for you. To honor this, Jesus, we see now with our eyes where you are in God's plan, and we will treat you accordingly. He was trying so hard to respond. The word he was given, as God has the cloud come over them, this is my son, well-loved, the beloved one. Listen to him. The response that was needed from these disciples was not to build shrines, to build up that which is beautiful, to connotate how holy this space was. The holy response was merely to listen to what Jesus had to offer. Now, what is wonderful and good for us now is that as disciples today, wondering what the appropriate response is to the conditions of the world, because the world is it's not an, an easy place right now. Things are changing unrest and violence that we have seen in recent times, it, it shakes us. To see the level of, of discord in our society where, where what is actually true can't even be agreed upon by, by a majority of our country. This pandemic is frightening and, and destructive to, to many financially and challenging to so many being separated from folks. It hurts and it's hard. What are we to do and how are we to respond now? Listen to Jesus. That is something we can do. Trapped at home inside our houses, we can still listen. We can still read of the Gospels and the stories and that which Jesus offers, and we can listen. We can work to try to change our lives in a way that brings us closer. But maybe the real, the real lesson is 
if we bring ourselves closer to God, then that's where the transformation comes from. It's our job to try to move ourselves up the figurative mountain, to move ourselves in tune with God's call, with God's presence, because that is transformative. And honestly, I say that, you know, it feels like some of the interpreters feel uh, frightened of saying that Jesus transformed, but truly, it, any sort of change is a bit on the side of, of frightening. In, in what way do our lives need to be transformed, need to be changed? In what ways can we open ourselves up to let God in more? In what ways are, are we being afraid of the call that God has upon us? Feeling indignant that God would suggest that we should love our enemies because they don't deserve it. The places where we are resistant to the calls that Jesus gives us to love all. Resistant and fearful that change might move us farther away from where we want to be. Fearful because so much change has been around us in the last year that we don't want any more. I understand that. But it is an opportunity before us to use this time and this journey of Lent as we move with Jesus through it, to move ourselves closer to God and allow ourselves to be transformed in ways that might be frightening. Now, maybe when I say this, you know in your deep in yourself exactly what way that you need to change and what you need to give, uh, let go of or, or, or take on the way in which God has got upon you to change. And maybe you have no idea what way God would want to change you. But I invite you to take this time to draw closer to God. And that would be the strength for those things you know you need to change, those patterns that feel as though they will never change because you've tried so many times before. So why keep trying? Draw closer to God. Let God be the one that transforms and heals the place you need. Draw closer to God that you might find the ways you need to be transformed or the ways that God would choose to transform you. That you might travel more closely to God. It is traditional in the time of Lent that one uh, gives something up, like sweets or caffeine or smoking or something, and gives up something a lot of times, a, a, a vice that they have, and it reminds you throughout that time that this is Lent and a time of preparation. And I invite, if that, if that is something that is meaningful for you, for you to do, is to think about what that might be for you, or to think about what you need to take on what you might need to do that could bring you closer to God. Taking on practices of meditation, of prayer, finding ways to bring yourself closer to God and closer to others. It is a time for us, if we choose it, that we might move closer to God. That this might be a journey up a mountaintop that will give us a life-changing view. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you know the places in our hearts that are hurting. 
You know the ways in which we have been worn down and weak from the journey that we have been on. Lord, you know the ways we have fallen short of your great calling. The ways we have not loved one another as you've called us to. Maybe we haven't even loved ourselves the way you have called us to. Lord, in silence, we lift to you those places where we have fallen short or those places where we are wounded and in need of your transformative healing. We lift them to you that you might surround us with your light and grace and transformation. As you breathe in, I invite you to imagine it as the light of God. A bright light entering into our bodies. That it might go into the crevices and hurts and pains to cleanse out wounds and bring healing that it might enter into those places and parts of ourselves that we have boxed off out of fear or shame. That it might be within us to transform us in your image and your love. Christ's name we pray. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven and made new. Thanks be. Christ, which is frightening, transformational, it is powerful. Carry within you the light of Christ that you might be a light to a world in need, a world in darkness. Go in peace and power.